Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Rumble, YouTube, and Spotify. Today we continue in our study of the book of Romans. We're in chapter 12, verses 17 and 18, which reads, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for those good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That's Romans chapter 12, verses 17 and 18. Today we return to our study of Romans chapters 12 through 16, where the Apostle Paul shows us what a servant looks like. This whole final section in the book of Romans is all predicated on the command in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Be it a sacrifice to the Lord is the same as being the servant of the Lord. Servanthood, which is the opposite of the self-life, is God's goal in our lives. Deciding to be a servant does not come natural for any of us. In fact, it is the byproduct of the workings of God's grace and mercy in our lives. This is why it takes so long for us to see the value of being a servant. While most believe this life is about what we get, the life the Lord Jesus died to give us is about what we give. In verse 17 of today's passage, we read, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. When somebody does something evil to us, unless we are walking tightly with the Lord, we will react to evil with evil. This is our default mode or our natural reaction. In order to avoid this, we must daily submit ourselves to the Lord as his servants so that we do not go the way of the self. We must predispose ourselves to do good when evil comes. This is a deliberate process. Otherwise, we fail. Looking to exact revenge on someone is one of the biggest expressions of insecurity known to man. It takes a bigger than big man to treat those who mean us harm with kindness. And the inevitable result of trying to get even with people is that we escalate the conflict. This is inescapable when we approach it from the vantage point of the self. This does not mean that we should seek to please everyone. Rather, it means we should live righteously according to God's principles in plain view of everyone. We should be fair and honest in all of our dealings with others, especially those who treat us wrongly. We should be above reproach in the sight of our peers. This comes about by knowing God and his culture for ourselves. The more we understand God's grace toward us, the more likely we are to extend grace when wronged. This happens supernaturally by submitting ourselves to God as a living sacrifice and by renewing our minds by the word of God and letting the new creation that exists within us to seep out. In verse 18 of today's passage, we read, If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all men. The golden rule says, do unto others what you would want them to do to you. The principle came from the Lord Jesus as recorded in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. In fact, the Lord Jesus reminds us that this relational principle in life is much of what God gave us through the Old Testament law and prophets. The general rule in life is hurt people hurt people. We must be careful not to assume another person's motives. They might be in crisis 
they may be in need of some grace themselves. There are some people in this world, when we try to make peace with them, we discover it is just impossible. When we have tried everything there is to do, and they still will not respond, we can't do a whole lot about that. The reality is that it takes two to make peace. But if it's possible, as much as we can, we are to never let the conflict come from us. We are to always make peace and resist conflict. Understanding the principle found in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that God uses all things together for our good, is key to all of this. The Old Testament patriarch Joseph understood this principle very well, and look at where it got him. When his brothers wanted him dead, Joseph continued to be defined by God, which meant that he responded to the hate of his brothers with love. Interestingly, Joseph's brothers tried to get rid of Joseph because they were being defined by the self. And as a result, they wanted to get rid of Joseph. But in doing so, they fulfilled Joseph's dreams. Amazingly, in the end, the Lord allowed the ill treatment of Joseph to equip Joseph to bring God's blessing to many in Egypt and to many throughout the world at that time. You see, it, it, it takes the ability to recognize that God is sovereign and everything he allows or causes to happen in our lives has its purpose. And we never know how involved God is involved, even in the most difficult moments of our lives. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.